That is your base. And if you look at any strong person, they got two things in common. Strong, thick, meaty back. Strong, thick, meaty legs. Period. It's not the arm guys that you got to be worried about. It's when someone turns around, you see the glutes popping out, the hamstrings, wide back. That's the dude who's going to be very troublesome in competition. That's the dude who's going to take your medal. That's the dude who's winning first place. That's the guy who's excelling on the field. It's lower body. And if you look at all the old-time strongmen, they were bottom heavy for the most part. They all had tree trunk legs, and that's what gave them their strength. And that's also why a lot of gymnasts, for example, they got these amazing arms, nice pecs, shoulders, etc. But their absolute strength is not as good. That's because legs and back is literally your foundation. So it's very, very important. And I can tell you for a fact that if you could raise your squat and deadlift, that's going to help your rows guaranteed. Because imagine if you can deadlift 600 pounds. And when I say deadlift, I'm referring to any variation. Sumo, behind a bag, Jefferson, Trabar, any type. If you could do 600 on any pull, your rows are going to be a joke. It's the same thing for power cleans. People have known this for years. If you raise your deadlift, well, it's easier to do cleans. If you can deadlift 600, your power clean of 300, it's going to be easier to do. Whenever you raise your absolute strength in the legs, and even the back, these are the two most important areas for strength, by the way, you see improvements. Another thing, too, is that most of these heavy compound movements, it's synergistic. It works the legs and the back simultaneously. Whether it's a partial or a full range of motion exercise, it works together. For example, when you do a front squat, upper back, upper back and legs, because you have to have elbows up and that tight thoracic extension going on. When you do any good morning, for example, you're working the entire posterior chain. When you do deadlifts, you got to stabilize. When you do rack pulls, you got to keep the upper back in a good position. It works together. It's synergistic. So it will have carryover to other activities. And for athletics, it's crucial. Absolutely crucial in every possible respect. You can't be the best athlete if you got sticks for legs. I'm sorry. Not going to happen. Unless you're a marathon runner. But any strength sport, any explosive sport, it's legs. And for those saying, oh, what about Olympic weightlifters? Bro, bro. Have you seen Olympic weightlifters? Huge legs. Pound for pound, incredible leg development. Ass to grass squats, you know. Uh, very strong squats. I'm telling you, guys, legs is your base. This is what you need for athletics. And usually the guys that are bottom heavy, even the wide hip motherfuckers, those dudes have great potential for sport. A lot of the guys you see that are arm dominant in a sense, not really the best for strength development. Arm dominance is a cool look. In fact, I'm quite jealous of the guys who have those huge guns. I'm very jealous. Damn you. But... It's not your base. The base is going to be your heavy pulls and your leg training, okay? And one very, very significant effect of leg training is the fact that it builds tremendous work capacity. Undeniable, okay? So if you're squatting in the 400s, for example, and you're doing that for volume, say 40,000 pounds of work per workout, don't you realize that's going to help your upper body? Because you're building work capacity, if I make you do bodyweight squats for high reps, builds work capacity, it's still activity, using the same body. Sure, different muscles are being worked, but you're building work capacity. That's why it's so beneficial. You're building structural integrity. You're building core strength. That's another thing too. Your squats, your heavy pulls, works the core, man, works the lower back. A lot of these guys you see who don't really focus on that, they got lagging spinal rectors. There's a reason for this. There's a reason why an athlete, when you look at it from the back, it's like, yeah, that's a fucking athlete. You could tell it's an athlete. So that's why leg training is very important. I personally believe that if you want to maximize your legs, okay, in terms of size and strength, uh, the powerlifting way is by far the best. And in particular, for athletes, I like West Side programming 100%. Uh, some guys might disagree with me on that one, but I'm pro, I'm pro Louis Simmons, man. And I think that the higher exercise selection and doing the bands and the different box squats and the partials and all that, all good stuff for athletes. So leg training is extremely beneficial. Whether you're a recreational lifter or you're a competitive athlete, you can't go wrong. It's your base. You're going to get a stronger row as a result of it. Your poles are going to go up. If your front squat raises, say hello to a, a stronger deadlift. You know, It's all synergistic. It's all interconnected. That's where your base is. And as a final bonus, it's going to prevent you from having that horrible chicken leg syndrome. Who wants chicken legs? Who wants that? No. 
A subscriber asked me, Alex, what's worse, having tree trunk legs or chicken legs? Do you even have to ask? Chicken legs, man. Who the fuck wants chicken legs? I don't want sticks for legs. Now, I do find the tree trunk look to be repulsive. I think it's not aesthetic whatsoever. I think the X taper is not a desirable look. I'm not trying to look down upon anyone who competes in bodybuilding or that's the look that they want or their uh, powerlifters who need that exercise. You do you, but I don't find it aesthetic. So I'd also like to conclude this video by saying that if you've reached a point where your legs are very, very strong or you're just content with your size and they're balanced and proportional and you're a guy who wants the aesthetics, if you will, then it's fine if you start getting lazy on them. And I think that's something that people didn't understand in my last video. When I'm saying that, be content, it's like, Get what you want first, and then if you don't feel like pursuing any more, then be my guest. Don't be pressured by society, in other words. So that's all I'm trying to say, you know. And also, there's certain types of leg training that's unnecessary, like explosive stuff. If you're going to do box jumps, it could be beneficial for athletes, but a recreational lifter, you probably don't need that stuff, you know. Maybe just doing some basic sprints will be uh, beneficial, or strides. So that's it, folks. Legs are very important. It's your base. It's going to help you in all other aspects. It's going to build your core strength, your back strength simultaneously, work capacity, everything. And if you ever do compete one day, you're going to have that structural integrity. And also, one last thing, prevents your body from breaking down. You're not going to have joint pain when you're older. It's going to be a beautiful thing if you train correctly. So train your legs. Don't be lazy unless, of course, you're content. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Give me some feedback down below. And with that, I'll talk to you all next time.